Representative Stacey Abrams has qualified to appear on the ballot in the Peach State's gubernatorial race qualification on Tuesday. The qualification was a formality for Abrams in her quest to be the next governor of Georgia. She is the most prominent name in the race to officially make it on the ballot. Stacey Abrams, who served as a member of the Georgia House of Representatives between 2007 and 2017, narrowly lost to Governor Kemp in 2018 by about 55,000 votes or less than 1.4 point. If she wins next year, she will become the first black governor of Georgia and she will be the first color person to serve as the governor in the United States. Welcome to Georgia Asian Time Conversation, Ms. Abram. Thank you for having me. Great. How do you plan to engage with the AAPI community if you are elected as the governor of Georgia? My intention is to begin as I have for so very long. When I became a member of the Georgia House of Representatives, I was very intentional about building a staff that included and reached out to the Asian American community. When I became minority leader in 2011, I was very intentional about hiring because I believe that our leadership, including staff, needs to look like Georgia. I also did a regular broadcast on Korean radio explaining what was happening during the legislative session because I understood that there were very few representatives in the legislature at the time, I believe there were only two, who were of Asian descent and neither of them were Democrats. And I thought it was very important for both perspectives to be provided to the AAPI community. Going forward, my team is reflective of the diversity of the state, including the AAPI community. I've worked very closely with Asians Americans Advancing Justice, with their predecessor organization founded by Helen Kim Ho, and I've worked across the board with almost every region. And I will tell you, I've spent time both in Seoul, Korea and in Taiwan, because I believe that the future of our state is grounded in not just, in, in, not just celebrating our diversity, but amplifying it. And that means working hard to ensure the inclusion of the Asian American community in every facet of my campaign and my administration. That's a very good uh, response to the very simple question. <laughs> <laughs> After submitting your paperwork on the 2020 uh, governorship race on Tuesday, you declare your campaign would focus on three key areas, expanding Medicaid, funding education, bolstering the economic development in Georgia. Can you briefly explain your vision on each of the areas to the AAPI community? Certainly. Let's start with expanding Medicaid. In the United States, Medicaid is a joint project between the federal government and the state government to provide access to health care to low-income communities. What we often don't realize, though, is that senior citizens quickly become a part of that community. Yes, you receive Medicare, but if you needed nursing home care, if you needed additional services, those are funded by Medicaid. And because Georgia refuses to expand the program, we have thousands of Georgia seniors, including members of the AAPI community, who are not getting the resources they need. And we know that as our population ages, the billions of dollars that every one of us is paying into this program, those dollars are going to other states and not coming back to Georgia. So that's the first issue. On education, I know that we have strong opportunities for our children. My parents made certain that all six of their children went to college. But that meant we had to have a strong K through 12 education. And that is something that unfortunately, Georgia is not excelling at. I wanna make certain that we are fully funding education and that we're doing what we need to do to make our kids competitive every single day. And on economic development, I have worked hard both as a legislator and as a small business owner to make certain that the regulations that we are responsible for following are the right size for small businesses. 99% of businesses in Georgia aren't the big companies we hear about. They're small businesses. And we need to make certain our laws and our rules meet their needs. But we also have to pull apart the anti-immigrant legislation that passed, unfortunately, under Republican leadership that has tried to demonize communities that are simply trying to make a, make a living here. And so I've been a leading champion, both in my time in the legislature, fighting against that legislation, working with the business community and the Asian American community in particular to fight for smart policies 
to respect the fact that it's immigrant communities in Georgia that have moved us forward so quickly and that the second generation of AAPI communities need to be able to build on that success. Those are gonna be three of my priorities. Great. Well, as you know, March 16 marks the one year anniversary of the horrific Atlanta spa shooting. What would you do as a governor to stop the increasing hate crimes and the xenophobias against AAPI community in Georgia? First of all, I, I want to express my deep sympathies and my continued sadness at those tragic, tragic murders. But I also know that the xenophobia, the hatred comes in part from either isolating or ignoring communities. And we know that despite the fact that the AAPI community is more than 4% of Georgia's population, they rarely receive the attention they deserve. And that attention not only has to be directed from the very top, it has to be positive attention. We have to do more than celebrate Lunar New Year. We have to celebrate how vibrant this community is in Gwinnett, in DeKalb, in Fulton, but also the pockets across the state. Part of my vision is saying that the AAP, AAPI community is a part of Georgia, a central part of Georgia. And that means hiring, it means appointing, and it means celebrating participation. But it also means enforcing hate crimes laws, making certain that we don't allow national figures to demonize the AAPI community, and that we hold people accountable for their behavior and their words. Right. There will be an Asian justice rally on March 16 uh, across the Capitol at Liberty Plaza. Do you plan to attend? I am very, very pleased that I've been invited to attend and I will absolutely be there. We must stand in solidarity, but we also must signal very clearly our intention to protect our Asian American members of the community in Georgia. Great. Why do you choose We Are One Georgia as your campaign slogan? I grew up in Gulfport, Mississippi, and one of my first friends was a young Vietnamese woman who, whose family had come over at the end of the Vietnam War. She and I became friends in part because she was learning English at the time that I was, you know, we were both seven years old. We were trying to, to find our way as kids. And in that moment, we became close friends because we both faced a degree of discrimination. She because of her language barrier, me because of the racial issues, and, and she also faced racism. I carry that with me every day because I know that the differences between us created a bond between us. And the same is true for Georgia. The differences that we have are a strength for Georgia. The diversity of our communities, the diversity within the Asian American community, and I'm very clear that it is one of the most diverse populations we have, but that diversity makes us stronger. We need to think about this not in terms of ideology or partisanship or region, but we need to fight for one single Georgia where everyone gets to celebrate their differences, but succeed anyway. Because for me, the bottom line is being a state of opportunity, making certain that anyone willing to work to succeed has the support they need to get it done. And that means we're one Georgia. Oh, great. Oh, I think the most um, general question that the AAP community wants to know is how would the API community participate in your economic development vision when you are the governor of Georgia? As a small business owner, I learned firsthand how difficult it is to grapple with supply chain, to make certain that you can pay your vendors and pay your suppliers and you can pay your payroll. And when my business stumbled, when we grew to death, when we actually couldn't get the resources we needed, I co-founded a financial co company that actually buys invoices from small businesses to make sure they have access to cash. I understand that for most small businesses, they don't want major infusions of capital. They need customers, they need commerce, and they need a leader who understands the day-to-day -day operational issues. I'm coming in as someone who actually knows what it means to run a small business, to run a company that does retail or services. And I know that making access to capital possible is the most critical piece. Because for so many of these small businesses, they don't need someone to come in and buy part of their company. They need access to loans. They need access to equity grants. But they also need access to customers. And that means being able to contract with the state of Georgia. Georgia puts out billions in contracts every year. 
And one of my responsibilities is to make certain that the small businesses in Georgia and the mid-sized businesses in the AAPI community get to participate in the billions of dollars being spent by the state. We should start here and our money should stay here. Great. Well, thank you for your time, Stacy. And this has been a great conversation. And we look forward to your continuous engagement with the AAPI community. And we look forward to you coming to the community and speak to us directly. And thank you for your time, Stacey. Thank you so much. It's been a delight.